Welcome to the first video journal in the event sorcery order fulfillment example. So I want to really quick walk through a few things. Uh, we have three parts of this application I want to talk about, but first I want to let you know that you can access this code and any other event sorcery related code by going to your personal event sorcery settings and updating your profile information to include your GitHub account. Once you do that, you'll be invited to the event sorcery members team and you'll have access to all of that code. So let's get started talking about this repository. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to build the order fulfillment example that we've used throughout this series as a real world application. So here I'm listing the folders in the repository and I want to talk about three aspects before we get started, which is one, the virtual machine. So built in here is a vagrant virtual machine. It uses VirtualBox and Ansible as its provisioner. Now, if you don't know anything about virtual machines, that's okay. There are full installation instructions in the readme file of the GitHub repository for this example application. But if you don't want to have to set up a development environment individual for each application, you can go ahead and, and install VirtualBox, Vagrant, and Ansible, and bring this application up with its own environment just by typing Vagrant up. Now we've already installed it, so we can type Vagrant up and it's going to, instead of going through the process of downloading the, the Linux box and installing all the software and configuring it, it's just going to boot it up. So it's going to boot it up and it's going to be at the IP 10.10.10.10. And we have a host file set up in our Etsy slash host files folder so that we can access the site through the app.localhost name. Now this is going to work for Linux and OS X, but later I'm going to configure it to work with Windows machines as well. If you're running Windows, just go ahead and set up your regular uh, PHP development environment and you'll be able to uh, use this like normal. So if you actually, you can Vagrant SSH into this machine and have access to the machine, uh, the internals. So here is just where we can put scripts for development, etc. But moving on, let's talk a little bit about the source code. So this is my PHP storm and inside we have the order fulfillment application loaded up. You can see here, here's the vagrant and ansible folders used for the virtual machine. If you're not going to use the virtual machine, or even if you are, you can completely ignore these folders. This bin folder is the composer folder where it installs executable scripts. So inside here, well, you'll find PHP spec, which is the tool that I'm using to test, um, provide, specification testing for this application. You can see that in action here, if I run bin PHP spec run, and you'll see that it'll run the tests for the code base. Let's go back and we can continue through the folder lists. We have the Laravel folder, which is where I've installed the Laravel PHP development framework. Uh, this is one of the most popular PHP web development frameworks uh, right now. So I chose to use that for this project. But you can use any framework, of course, to develop this kind of stuff or, you know, build it without a framework. But I have isolated it into its own folder. Now, we're going to use that for things like command line interface tools and just simple web routing, that kind of stuff. So it's it's a nice, uh, nice tool to have a framework to handle some of that stuff for us. But our actual application code is going to go into the source folder. This folder is PSR4 loaded. And it has our actual uh, application code in here. Now, for now, we have our command dispatch code, which includes our command bus and command handler interfaces. Our event sourcing module, which has basic subclasses and utility classes for, for implementing event sourcing. Now, I like to have this kind of code in my application and not as some library because as I have different needs, I can implement it directly here. What I don't want to do personally is have a very extremely powerful generic solution. I like having a specific solution that is as simple as possible. And that means not implementing features that I don't need. I might need them later, but I'm happy to implement them later for the benefits that I get in the short term of having less code to maintain. Now in here, you can see that we have things like the aggregate base class. But we also have our very own collection class here. Now I implemented a collection class because I didn't want to use a framework specific collection class or something external 
I would like this to be framework agnostic. So this has all of the basic stuff, and I just want to impl- um, I want to emphasize that this is an immutable collection. This is never modified. It's just we return new collections whenever we add an item or something like that. Now we have higher order functions like map, reduce, and filter that we can use, and we'll return uh, new collections, etc. Now here we have a typed collection abstract class. This typed collection allows us to have a collection that only contains a specific type. And you can see that in play, if we go into the domain events class. Really quick, let's go ahead and tell, oops, fix that. Uh, really quick, let's go ahead and take a look at that domain events class. And you can see it's a, a collection of domain events. And if we try to put anything into it that's not a domain event, it's just going to raise an exception. So this is just a way of doing a type collection and implementing them easily. So that's kind of our event sourcing base module that we'll be using for uh, other code as we go forward. But here are our Laravel specific drivers. For command dispatch, we have a service provider and that's a Laravel uh, bo uh, bootstrapping mechanism. And this tells us that whenever we want to inject an instance of command bus, we're going to go ahead and for convenience, inject container resolving execution command bus, which is more than a little bit of a mouthful, but it's very simple. It just goes ahead and asks the mapper, what is the correct handler class for this command? And then it resolves it and tells it to handle this command. Very simple. Now, if we continue on, you can see the Laravel event sourcing drivers. So we have um, the ability to dispatch domain events. Uh, we have relational projection and event store helper classes. And those are nice for implementing read models and, and the like. And again, a bootstrapping service provider. Other than that, there's basic mailing tool that will allow us to send mail through the postmark service. Uh, nothing special here, but that is essentially the source code we're starting with. Now, the third part of this application is the user interface. So we have some basic user interfaces set up for our use cases. So when a customer goes to place an order, they're going to see a listing of products. We can add those to our cart and in our cart, we can remove them and ultimately place the order. Now, these are just HTML and CSS right now. Um, I'm just using a CSS bootstrapping framework, uh, nothing special, just to kind of get something up and running. Now, when an employee looks at the order that was placed, they can say, yeah, we have these items in stock or any number of other uh, checks that they can do on their side and then confirm the product. At that point in time, the customer can make payments on their order. This is a, just a fake credit card checkout form. Uh, it's not hard to throw Stripe or something behind this, but uh, pretty soon we're going to implement actual commands and events to, to execute this payment process. Once enough payment, once a payment has been made, rather, uh, we get payment received. Once enough money, the correct amount of money has been paid, then the order will be completed and marked for fulfillment. Then an employee can come in here and see what orders should be fulfilled and mark fulfill, indicating that the payment, the indicating that the order has been shipped. Now, these are all the uh, interface elements we need, but in the future, we can enrich and add new features to this. Now, the goal here is to continue developing this application and go over the source code and discuss the changes that have been made since the previous video. So we're gonna keep making installments until the application is finished and running, and you'll be able to see the, the source code, you'll be able to fork it, um, suggest changes and submit pull requests, and look at all the individual commits. We can talk about it on the event sorcery Slack, and uh, who knows what's gonna come out of this. I think it's a fun experiment. So let's, uh, Let's explore it together.